Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me again today as we will be spending some time in the Word together. I want to go ahead and open up in a word of prayer, asking God to bless our time together and that the Holy Spirit would open up our hearts and our minds and understanding of His Word. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today in Jesus' name. Lord, we just ask that as we assemble together via this uh, medium of internet that God you would bless us as we take some time in your word Holy Spirit help our understanding so that we can grow in our relationship with you and the ability to share that word with others so Lord we thank you for it all in Jesus name Amen this morning I want to share some thoughts regarding the holidays particularly Thanksgiving which will be coming up in just a few days and so the title of this message for today is Thanksgiving or Giving Thanks. Thanksgiving or Giving Thanks. We'll be looking at Psalm 100 in just a few moments with all that's going on uh, here in California, particularly with the restrictions that we have uh, given to us by Governor Newsom and our local county health officials, the holidays are probably not going to uh, look the same. They're going to be different if we follow these guidelines that have been laid out for us. We have governmental restrictions and most lately, you know, the curfew from uh, 10 o'clock at night till 5 in the morning and they're trying to dictate how many people you could have at your house and all of these various things that are being laid out for us right now so Thanksgiving Day may look incredibly different than what we had originally planned uh, there's governmental uncertainty that is going on as we are past election day but Things are still being disputed, and so there's some uncertainty of what is going to happen there. There's the fear of sickness or disease that many people are struggling with because of the COVID issue. And then there's just general lawlessness that we see being played out in our cities and across our country. So the holidays... I'm a bit concerned that they are not going to look like what they used to in our past. And as much as that, we long for and still strive, strive for some sense of normalcy when it comes to holiday celebrations. But that normalcy, I'm afraid, appears to be gone from us. And I think it'd be safe to say that we are all out of our comfort zone with all the events that are going on around about us. And in our culture, when we think of Thanksgiving, typically for the average American, Thanksgiving is a time uh, to spend with family or close friends. Uh, it is a time where obviously food is emphasized with turkeys and hams and whatever your family traditions are with that way. And then, of course, there typically are the football games and other sports events uh, that go on during this time. And yet every single one of those things has been adversely affected by the pandemic and uh, governmental unease and all of these things that are going on. And, and when all has been restricted or, or removed, it's easy to become discouraged or even angry uh, when these things happen in our lives. And we're basically left with some choices. We can choose to follow the guidelines and some people will choose not to. And we can, one on one hand, we can complain about what we don't have and all the restrictions and things, but complaining generally doesn't do much for ourselves or for others that listen to us. Or we have another option. We can choose to be people that are thankful for what we do have. So you can complain about what you don't have, or you can truly be thankful for what you do have. And uh, uh, as people, we generally enjoy our cultural Thanksgiving. We, we enjoy the get togethers and doing that. And so we can either focus our attention 
on family and friends and food and football, if you please, or we can be people who are truly giving thanks to God for all of his blessings. What, what I mean is we focus on the cultural aspect of thanksgiving, but do we focus on God to whom we should be giving thanks? And that's the difference I want us to, to think about today as we spend this time in the Word. So when we think about being thankful to God, we can be thankful for all that He has done for us. We can be thankful for His love, thankful for His justice. God is a just God, and evil will be dealt with by Him in His timing, and so we need to be aware of that. And we can be thankful that he is a God of love and a God of justice. He is also a God of power and provision. Nothing is impossible with God and nothing is impossible for God. And he has promised to supply our needs. He has promised to provide for us the things we have need of as we walk in obedience to his word. He's a God of, of discipline and correction. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 tells us God disciplines us because he loves us. He's treating us as his children when he does it. And he brings correction into our life. And it's for our good and for his glory. He is a God of, of promises and, and blessings. And throughout his word, there are so many promises that God gives us. And, and we've all experienced God's blessings. Whether you've recognized them or not, God has blessed us. And to recognize who God is and what he has done for us, uh, particularly uh, through his son, it's not only what God has done, but what he continues to do in our life, to, to give thanks. And we can and we should give thanks regardless of the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Think about what he's done. He's given us salvation. He has freed us from our sins. He has cleansed us from our sins. He has made it a way for us through Jesus Christ to be reconciled to him, to be brought into right relationship with God for the reason that you and I were created. He has adopted us as sons and daughters. In Romans chapter 8, it says that you and I, as believers in Jesus Christ, are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus, his son. So it's a wonderful thing. And then stop and think not only what God has done for us, what he continues to do for us. The scripture tells us that he always lives to intercede for us, that he stands before God the Father when, when we have sinned and he becomes uh, our defense attorney before God. He is preparing a place for us. He told the disciples in John chapter 14 that he's going to prepare a place for us. And if he's going to prepare a place, he's going to come back and get us so that we can be with him for all eternity. So as he's preparing us for that place, he's preparing that place for us. So God is, he is doing so much for us. And that's why Rather than just celebrate a day of thanksgiving, we need to be a people who give thanks to God continuously because we know that he is coming again. And while we're here, remember he has promised never to leave us or forsake us, but he would be with us even to the end of the age. So we have a lot to give thanks for. So let's go to Psalm 100. And Psalm 100 is only five verses, so we're going to read that psalm. And then I just want to talk to you a few things about what's contained in that psalm. So Psalm 100, starting at verse 1. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all 
generations. This truly is a psalm of thanksgiving to God for who he is and what he has done for us. So the scripture tells us that we are to make a joyful noise to the Lord. Now, let me ask you a question. When you look at that verse and it says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, does that imply to you that it's only during a church service? Is it only for that part of that service that, that we call worship time when we sing songs of praise and glory to God? Let me just encourage you to think about that verse in this way. When it says to uh, make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth, it implies more than just corporate worship. It should be the theme of our daily life that we are giving thanks and praise to God for who he is and what he has done for us. Also what he is doing for us and what he's preparing for us. It should be a lifestyle of giving thanks to the Lord. Uh, it should be the theme of our daily conversation. You might remember the old hymn of the church, Blessed Assurance. I, I just want to read the first stanza of that song and one line of the chorus. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. An heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit and washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Is that our lifestyle today? Are we people that praise God and, and speak freely of his goodness and what he has done for us? Or have we fallen into a pattern of complaining based upon our circumstances our relationship with God should be greater than our circumstances. We should be able to look beyond them and see and understand that God still loves us regardless of our circumstances, that he's doing a work in us because he wants to do a work through us. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. We can still grab onto those promises knowing that God is a faithful God and he will fulfill those. There's a verse of scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20. Now I'm reading this out of the New International Version the, from 1984. 1 Corinthians, I mean, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20, it says, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. All of the promises of God are yes in Christ, meaning as a child of God, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. All of the promises of God are a yes to us who are in Christ. And through him, we speak the amen or so be it, Lord. So that places us in a position, regardless of what's going on in our world, where God can truly bless us. So we can serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. It, it, it should be a joy to serve the one who died for us. When we think of serving God with glasses, one aspect of that is that we joyfully obey what the Word of God tells us. We read it in Scripture, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, we walk in obedience to what His Word tells us. When we do that, we open up the avenue for God to bless us. How we can also serve the Lord with gladness is to care for people around about us, caring for others in his name. So we can make a joyful noise to the Lord. We can worship him verbally and audibly and tell of his praises to others. We can serve the Lord with gladness and we can come into his presence with singing. In verse uh, three, it says, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us. We are his. We are his people 
and the sheep of his pasture. The Lord, he is God. Over all the earth and all those who live in it, God is still God. He is working all things according to his plans, according to his purposes. He is still enthroned in the heavens and he cannot be moved. He is still God. And then it says that we are his. What a blessing to know that we belong to God and God knows how to watch over those who are his. We are his people. He has claimed us for himself. He has set us in a very special place and he watches over us. It says that we are the sheep of his pasture and God is attentively watching over our lives. He provides for us what is best. He gives us the protection that we need for us. Let me encourage you to do this today. When you have the time, and maybe some of you have even memorized this chapter in the Bible, Psalm 23, it talks about the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. And as you go through that Psalm, it begins to tell us how God will watch over our lives, how we will provide for us and lead us and protect us. And even when we're going through difficult times, God is there for us and he will take us through them. We will come out okay on the other side. This is one of those times when we need to trust the good shepherd. Another passage of scripture that you may want to look at is in John chapter 10, verses 1 through 18, where Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd and the sheep know his voice and they follow him and he takes them out into green pastures. He gives them protection. So when the scripture tells us that we are the sheep under his care, the sheep of his pasture, friends, we have a God who loves us and will take care of us. He attentively watches over us. And then we go down into verse four. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. That is something that we make a choice to do. Whether we're feeling great and everything is going good or maybe in difficult times like this, this truly is a time and a season for us as individuals and for us as a church to bless the Lord and remember who he is and to give thanks to him because he's worthy of all thanks, of all praise, of all adoration. He is the one that we hold on to in difficult times knowing that he will watch over us. Look at verse 5 in Psalm 100. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. His faithfulness to all generations. The Lord is good. And friends, God does not change. He has always been good. He will always be good. And he's good right now. His mercy and his grace they are renewed to us every morning. His ears are attentive to our prayers. He hears us when we pray. He knows what we are going through. He is a good God and he never changes. In the book of James, it says every good and perfect gift comes down from our heavenly father who never changes like the shifting shadows. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does what is best and it's always good for us. Now I'll admit, sometimes it doesn't feel so good. Sometimes it feels hard or difficult. But remember, in these times, God is drawing us to himself. So we have that assurance that God is watching over us. His steadfast love endures forever, regardless of the circumstance. God loves us. It endures forever. It is steadfast 
unmovable. And you may be thinking, well, uh, I'm going through this hard time or I am sick or there's a financial difficulty going on. These are all chances for God to prove himself true as we put our trust in him. The enemy would want to move you away from your confidence in God, but stand firm. Our God loves us. It will never change. And it says, and his faithfulness to all generations our parents, our grandparents, God was faithful to all of his promises. To us, he is faithful. To our children, he will be faithful. To our grandchildren, he will be faithful. To our great-grandchildren, as many generations as there is until the Lord comes back, God's faithfulness will be there for all generations. So during this, Chris, or this Thanksgiving holiday that's coming up, it's going to be on Thursday. Maybe Wednesday you're preparing for whatever you've planned for Thursday. But through it all, let me encourage you, don't just be part of our culture that looks at Thanksgiving Day, but let's be part of a people of God that choose to give thanks to God every day. Because when we take the time to thank Him for who He is, what He has done, what he is doing and what he's promised yet to do for us every day can be a day of thanksgiving. By that, I mean a day where we can give thanks to God because he holds us in the palm of his hand and truly blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He is ours. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. The heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. So let this be our story. Let this be our song. We're praising our Savior all day long. God bless you, my friends. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. God, help us to hold on to you ever tighter in the midst of our circumstances, knowing, God, that with you there's always victory in store. Thank you, Father. Amen. God bless you, friends. Have a great day in Him. Bye-bye.